Hey everybody, just welcome again to another session here of the HubSpot How To Hacks. Uh, this week I'm kind of bringing in another session from a question I got from a client doing an onboarding. This client was setting up an event, uh, so he's using the campaigns to set up his assets and he had a landing page and registration page and the whole bit, right? This is a dated event. So his question was revolving around an automation to that event. So I'm going to go through a couple of steps here on how I suggested just some simple ways to create a framework around what he was intending to do with that workflow. Uh, so here in the next steps, uh, you're going to find out a couple of the requirements that he was proposing. Take a look at those requirements, see if that's something that you're thinking about in your event. Maybe we can add a couple of things, but feel free to drop some comments in the uh, comments below to see if you've got some additional questions about how you would add or modify that that workflow it's gonna be really simple hope you like it here's some more value for you coming up next all right so i wanted to jump in on what were the next steps to uh to create this automation but first just so you understand the framework of the question that i received what my client was trying to do is he was trying to create a registration page with a form using hubspot and then create this automation based on the date of the event. This was actually a class. And so what he was wanting to do is once someone signs up for the class, right, that they get a couple of things. So the first thing that uh, they, this workflow would need to accomplish would be that the automation would need to be triggered around when that contact would fill out the form. Number two, the contact would need to be, uh, would actually need to receive a confirmation email immediately. All right, and then number three, that contact should probably get added to a list so we can go back later, look at uh, you know these attendees for the uh, registration class, uh, and then actually maybe uh, continue to market to them if we wanted to offer them an additional class. And then lastly, and the trickier part was sending an email to that uh, uh, new registration uh, submission, that new client, or that new class uh, person is to get that email one day prior to the event. So in other words, once they filled that out, uh, they would get an email a day before the event started. So I wanted to uh, address that, that those are the requirements of the workflow. So let's jump into a quick screen share and I'm gonna show you how I set this up. Okay, so right now we're in the uh, workflow that I created. Went ahead and named the event, uh, the test event workflow here. So make sure you name these and give it a description that accurately reflects uh, why you created this workflow. So this workflow is going to you know, reflect this, the goals of that uh, particular actions we wanna take after the class. So in this case, the trigger was just gonna be the form submission. Uh, just remember when you do add these triggers, you've got abilities to add more parameters. So you can make it multiple parameters here, or you can make it a, a parameter that's different than this. So make it a couple of different criteria that they have to meet. This is really simple uh, workflow, so we're not going to worry about that. I just want to give you that extra uh, context there. So uh, as soon as this uh, uh, person would register for the class, the immediate thing after that's going to happen is they're going to be added to the static list. Another tidbit here, create the static list before you create the workflow. OK, so after after they get added to the static list and what's a nice feature of doing this is that you're able to market to your attendees afterwards if you want to also offer uh, additional classes and upgrades. The next step here is they will get that confirmation email. So right away, these are not going to have any delays included in there, so they're going to happen automatically. Uh, so make sure also when you send this email that you send uh, an email from your automation pool. Uh, you do have to do this also, again, before uh, this workflow uh, it makes it a little bit easier. What you can do also just as an additional uh, feature, you can click uh, and add. This is how you add an email to an external as an external email. It gives you an option to choose from your pool of automated emails you've already created. But it also gives you the ability to create a new email and you just fill out this form and it's going to send an email looking similar to like a Gmail or Outlook. It's not going to be branded. OK, that's just another option. Then lastly is the delay date. So I got to explain this for you because this was not uh, a possibility before. But when you add a delay until a date, uh, HubSpot uh, updated this feature um, late last year you're able to pick a calendar date or a contact date property. Now, 
in this case, it makes it easier just to go ahead and pick a calendar date because we know it, because it's already something filled out, right? It's something that we know. Contact date properties are going to be things that happen on the fly. We want to mark an event uh, that the like maybe uh, some type of page was visited, uh, some email was read on a certain particular date. So those are different things that the system is going to mark on the date that it actually happens. In this case, calendar date is known. Let's just say that the class is on April 9th. Well, what I want to do is I want to set the delay to happen on April 8th because I want to send an email on that day. So this is why I set that there. We set that delay until April 8th. Then uh, as we trigger that at 7 a.m., it's going to kick off the email right at 7 a.m. on April 8th so that they receive a reminder that, hey, you've got a, a class coming up on April 9th and any of the additional uh, information that's met that's that's necessary in those uh, in that email. Okay, and that's it. That's all that I have for putting together this workflow. It's really simple in terms of this uh, particular type of automation. So there you have it, folks. It is the end of this series and uh, as far as this session, and I hope that you got some value from that. This is a very decent, simple uh, workflow that does what it's exactly set to do. It's not very hard, but I wanted to make sure that the little feature was there for you so you're going to have that as a nugget. Um, again, if you're in my onboarding sessions, I hope this helps you uh, continue to build out your automations. Uh, if you have more interest or any interest in terms of uh, onboarding with HubSpot, we've got some additional uh, information for you. So just feel free to connect with me, send me a DM, go to our website, connect with one of our sales reps. But uh, if you want some additional information on how we do HubSpot onboarding, feel free to reach out. I'd love to talk to you further, connect with you on LinkedIn. Uh, if you got any questions, let me know. Thanks.